Today we keep the feast of the Lord's Ascension. Our introit psalm is Psalm 47 on page 398 of the prayer book. Psalm 47 on page 398. O clap your hands together, all ye people. O sing unto God with the voice of melody. For the Lord is high and to be feared. He is the great king upon all the earth. He shall subdue the peoples under us and the nations under our feet. He shall choose out an heritage for us, even the excellency of Jacob, whom he loved. God is gone up with a merry noise, and the Lord with the sound of the trump. O oh, sing praises, sing praises unto our God. O oh, sing praises, sing praises unto our King. For God is the King of all the earth. Sing ye praises with understanding. God reigneth over the nations. God sitteth upon his holy seat. The princes of the peoples are joined unto the people of the God of Abraham. For God, which is very high exalted, doth defend the earth as it were with a shield. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God, with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Grant, we beseech thee, almighty God, that like as we do believe, thy only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to have ascended into the heavens, so we may also in heart and mind thither ascend, and with him continually dwell, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons. The lesson is written in the seventh chapter of the book of the prophet Daniel, beginning at the second verse. In those days Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from him. Thousand thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were opened. I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven, and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion, and glory, and a kingdom, that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. Here endeth the lesson. The lesson for the epistle is written in the first chapter, the Acts of the Apostles, beginning at the first verse. The former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up, after that he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which, saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. 
When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, I stand ye gazing up into heaven. This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner, as ye have seen him go into heaven. Here endeth the lesson. Holy Gospel according to St. Mark in the 16th chapter, beginning at the 14th verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. At that time, Jesus appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat, and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven, and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them, and confirming the word with signs following. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost to the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the dead. His kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets, and I believe one Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. From Psalm 47, verse 5. God is gone up with a merry noise, the Lord with the sound of the trump. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. On Christmas, we celebrate 
Christ coming visibly into the world. In the humility of the human nature, he assumed from Mary, therein to suffer, to die, and to rise again for us. Today, Ascension Day, we celebrate the end of his visible appearances, an end dramatized to us by the customary ceremony of the extinguishing of the Paschal candle, which is burnt since Easter. We celebrate his visible departure from the world, his incarnate humanity now taken up into heaven in the presence of his disciples until a cloud hid him from their sight. It's the outward sign of his transition from this realm of space and time and his exaltation at the Father's right hand, where beyond and outside of space and time, he now lives and reigns as King of kings and Lord of lords. It is the incarnate God that has gone up with the merry noise, the Lord with the sound of the trump. On Ascension Day, I'm reminded of some lines from a familiar Advent hymn of St. Ambrose. From God the Father, he proceeds. To God the Father, back he speeds. Runs out his course to death and hell, returning on God's throne to dwell. It's a thought rather similar to the one we heard in last Sunday's Gospel. I came forth from the Father and am come into the world. Again, I leave the world and go to the Father. And indeed, in the manhood, he assumed in the womb of Mary. The Son returns home to the Father. In triumph, his mission accomplished, our redemption perfected. And in him, man has attained to his end in God. You see another note of finality, not merely the end of his visible appearances, but an end that is a goal, a destiny, a purpose attained, a mission accomplished. And that note of finality, of the end attained, runs throughout the Feast of the Ascension. To understand it, though, let's back up a little bit and consider it in the light of what came just before, the cross and the resurrection. On the cross, Christ wins the hidden victory for us in his obedience unto death, accomplishing our return to the Father from the very depths of our alienation, our rebellion, our distance and uh, immersion in darkness. And that victory was first manifested in the resurrection, a moment of recovery and restoration, the empty tomb, no grave robbery, but the sign that hell has been harrowed and death despoiled. The risen body of the Lord, evidence of humanity rescued from the power of sin and restored to right relation with God, restored to righteousness. But the power of the hidden victory won upon the cross is not exhausted by the resurrection. That's just the beginning in Christ's ascension into heaven, in his exaltation to the Father's right hand, the moment of recovery and restoration which first appears to us in the resurrection is now shown to be also an advance and an exaltation beyond anything we've known before. In Christ, humanity not only enjoys the restoration of right relation to God, but advancement to a new status, a new dignity, of divine sonship, so that, as Peter says with great boldness in his second epistle, we are partakers of the divine nature. We share in the very life of God. In the ascension, even more than in his advent, the true character of the incarnation is fully realized and exhibited. And that's, as the Athanasian Creed puts it, not the conversion of Godhead into flesh, but the taking up of manhood into God. Our frail and mortal fleshly nature, clothed in the power and authority and glory 
of a mortal spirit. For those who are in Christ, the ascension means not only that we're justified, restored to right relationship with the Father, but adopted into sonship, empowered by the Spirit, and in confident expectation of an eternal inheritance. In Christ's ascension into heaven, man has attained his end in God. But if that's so, then the work of redemption is in fact complete. There's nothing further to be done. Nothing needs to be added. Nothing needs to be repeated. It is a finished work. And indeed, the angels pick up this point when they rebuke the disciples for gaping at the skies into which their master has disappeared. Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Which is to say that in virtue of Christ's finished work, all that remains is for that finished work, his redemption, his triumph and kingdom to be manifested universally when he comes again in glory to judge the world. What he's accomplished for us once for all in his humanity is therefore definitive for all history, all time, all space, all peoples and cultures. It is now no longer bound by space and time. The body of Christ no longer limited to a finite number of interactions and relationships that one individual in space and time can realistically maintain. All that Christ has attained in his humanity is now universally available by the Holy Spirit through faith alone to all sorts and conditions of men. And that presence to all humanity it's not in some watered-down, second-hand, second-rate, diminished sense. No, this is actually with a deeper intimacy, a greater fullness than was ever possible in the finite. The Christ who stood next to his disciples in the, his earthly life now dwells in their very hearts and minds by the Spirit. So while the time between Christ's ascension and his return to glory neither adds nor subtracts to the perfection of his finished work and redemption, it doesn't mean that it's a time of no significance. If the ascension brings to an end the age of redemption, it inaugurates the age of proclamation by the Spirit-empowered church. That's what Jesus tells his disciples to expect and pray for just before he's taken up into heaven. Ye shall receive power, he says, after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth, a charge to bear witness to Christ, not only with our lips, but in our lives. And witness to Christ and the gospel in speech, an act of the Spirit's power is what we find also in the version of the Great Commission, uh, it, which is in uh, St. Mark's Gospel lesson. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Like other accounts of the apostolic mission, it speaks both of the proclamation of the gospel in words, its confirmation by signs of supernatural saving power. There's no missing, however, the note of bald finality with which it throws down the choice before us to receive or to reject the re redemption it proclaims. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. The finished work of Christ demands a decision. 
The witness and testimony of the apostles to Christ demands a verdict. And that decision, that verdict, is one of the utmost consequence. So there is a decisive finality, not only in the redemption that Christ has accomplished for us, the redemption proclaimed in the gospel, but also in the choices that we make here and now in relation to it. Our choice is either to receive the redemption it freely offers or to choose something else. Indeed, we may well choose not to choose, but that, of course, is also a choice. However we choose or do not choose, in all our choices in relation to the gospel is forged an eternal destiny. There is a finality to the decision we make. Now, such choices are not a matter of a fleeting moment, a passing mood. Revivalistic religion in North America is full of short-lived conversion experiences, experience of being born again that leaves so many of the born again unchanged in any discernible way. It is rather a choice that is lived out day by day in a thousand other choices, many of them apparently trivial, most of them altogether unreligious in their overt character. All of them choices made to receive or to reject the redemption freely offered. Given the instability of our wills, the choice that we make at one moment may well be unmade in the next, as some other bright, shiny object comes into view and catches our attention. The stability of our choosing, our willing, will not be found in ourselves. It will be found in the fixing of our gaze on the one who has ascended into heaven for us. It will be found in the gift of Christ himself. And so today our prayer is this, that like as we do believe, thy only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to have ascended into the heavens, so we may also in heart and mind thither ascend, and with him continually dwell. Amen. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. On this Feast of the Ascension, we pray indeed that we may seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth at the right hand of God, that we may set our minds on the reality uh, that is hidden in heaven against the day of its glorious appearing, that we may govern ourselves as those who belong to the ascended Lord. I bid your prayers for our country and state, for its leaders and the decisions and choices that they are making, for the choices our citizens, fellow citizens, are making as we negotiate the trials and tests before us. Of your charity, I bid your prayers for the repose of the souls of the faithful departed. And I bid your prayers also for Thomas Lafollette West, not of this parish, a member of a parish family, upon whose soul and the souls of all the faithful, may Almighty God have mercy. Amen. Amen. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord. And that light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also, so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers, that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the 
punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people, give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present. That with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness of the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to give us grace to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. And now, as our Saviour Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. God is gone up with a merry noise, and the Lord with the sound of the trump. Alleluia. Christ, when he ascended up on high, alleluia. Led captivity captive and received gifts for men, alleluia. Let us pray. Blessed art thou, O Lord God Almighty, the Ancient of Days, who has set thy Son, Christ Jesus our Lord, upon the glorious throne of thy kingdom, exalted far above all peoples, all places, all times, eternally, that he, who hath worn our flesh and borne our manhood, into the Holy of Holies, should henceforth pour down heavenly gifts upon his brethren, and be both our righteous judge and most merciful intercessor. To whom with thee, O Father, and thee, O Holy Spirit, one God, be ascribed all might, majesty, dominion, and praise, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.